Welcome to the Rope Access channel. My name is Alex and today we will continue with the gear series and we'll be touching on ropes. In the rope access world we use two types of ropes. We have semi-static and a dynamic. The dynamic one, let's start with this first. We use the dynamic rope for our personal lanyards or our cow's tails. The way to set it up we will touch on in a different video, but the main thing to know is that there is some stretch in this so that you have a little bit of an absorption property in your personal lanyard just in case of a small fall that is more comfortable on the body. The ropes we are actually working in are semi-static and sometimes even static but that's a uh, specified use special occasions. Uh, and normally we use EN 1891 ropes in our devices descenders and ascenders. This is semi-static rope that has some elongation but not that much. And the ropes we are using are Kern mantle ropes. That means there is a core inside and a mantle outside protecting the rope. And I have a little example of a rope that we cut up. So there is a core made out of hundreds of different little threads and there is a mantle on the outside protecting the core. These two things combine determine the strength, the stretch the usability of the rope. And with usability I mean the way how easy it is to tie a knot. Of course when the rope gets older it gets more stiff and it's harder to tie a knot, but if some ropes are more easy to tie a knot than others. And all these factors combined determine how easy it is to use a rope. If the kern and the mantle are not designed properly then they might not slide easily through our descending or friction devices. Every time we tie a knot in the rope we actually weaken the rope. When a rope gets tested according to the EN 1891 standard, it's all specified how it's supposed to be loaded. It gets wrapped around the drum multiple times. The diameter of the drum, it's all specified by the testing standard and then it gets pulled apart. But tying a rope is different because if we tie a knot with all the little bends that we create, right? We actually squeeze the rope on one side and pull the rope on the other side. If I would go like this, I'm squeezing the rope on the inside and I'm bending it here. That's what makes it break. Most of the times the rope breaks in the knot, right? Somewhere in here. It never breaks here unless there is an external force applying pressure like an edge cutting or a, a sharp tool cutting the rope. But when it's getting pulled on a test bed, it always breaks inside the knot. Okay, so the knot weakens the rope. Now there's some people saying that you have to tie a figure of nine because it's 78% of the strength or you have to tie a figure of eight because it's 72%. Don't use a bowline because it's only 64%. I might be off on the percentages, but the, 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 the moral of the story is that when you tie a knot in the rope, that you weaken the rope. Now with pretty extensive testing I've personally done, I can say that if you take 50%, then you're on the safe side. If you take an old rope that's been used for six months out at sea and tie a knot, it's not as bendable as this one. So the pressure in the knot, it gets bigger. So if you tie different kinds of knots in different ages of rope on different environmental circumstances, then 50% you're always good. It's a pretty short video if you want me to get more in depth in the different types of ropes and the different materials used and why you might want to use a certain rope in a certain situation, please leave a comment and tell me what you would like to see. Now if you like this video, Please help the channel out, leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos. Alright, see you in the next one.